in this video, I'm going to write a paper to B. I was originally planning on doing one for both the American option and the international option, but instead I'm just going to do the international option for this one. If you would like me to make an American one, please let me know and I can work on one shortly, perhaps over the weekend to get it up before the ACE exam next week. So if you're watching this after May 10th, then the ACE exam is already passed later. Um, if you watch it later, then you'll be getting potentially information for next year's ACE exam. All right, so for a 2B, the thing is it works for all three options, whether you're doing American, European, international. Uh, the process is the same because it's the same syllabus. You'll have an hour and a half or the entirety of paper two. For 2B, I would say give yourself 30 minutes for each of the Bs you write because you do have to write two Bs. And I also, a little bit of advice, I might, whenever you're reading over the questions, pick the B that you feel the most comfortable with, that you're most confident with, and rewrite and write that option first. That way you're getting the one you're most confident with done first. That way you're kind of flowing with it. That way you don't get like a brain block, so to speak. All right, let's go ahead and start working on this. So I'm going to the international option. Now, as we look down the sec first page, Looks like this. It's just your the cover of your test booklet. It gives you all that wonderful information about section A, section B, section C, what you need to do. Remember for these, when you're doing paper two, you have to do both parts of two questions from one section only. So if you're doing European, you'll turn the page and you'll do option two, and you have questions one through four. For the American option, you're on section B, and you have questions five, six, seven, and eight. And then finally, page four, which I believe is on the back cover, is the international option in your questions 9, 10, 11, and 12. So just to repeat, in case you are unaware of this, the first video we're watching, if you wanted to do question B for um, option B for question nine, then you also would have to do the A option. And if you want to do question A on 10, then you also need to do the B option. So you have to pick two questions and do both parts of it. So if you want to do, um, you would pick like question nine and do A and B from that one or question 10 and do A and B from that one. You cannot pick um, A from nine, 10 from B or B from 10 um, on 11 do A and on 12 do B. You can't do that. You have to pick two of the questions and do both parts of the response. So once again, pick your B because those are your most points. They're worth double the points um, than your A. So for this one, I'm going to do the international option. I'm writing the B and I'm going to pick question 10 B. How consistent was the French government's attitude towards Germany in the period from 1919 to 1933? Okay, as you can see here, I have gone ahead and done my planning here. Uh, one thing I would really highly recommend that you do on this one is do your planning in your response booklet. I've said this in all my videos, they scan your test booklets and they will read every single word. So if you do your planning, it kind of gives your the person scoring you an idea of where you're going with what you're trying to write about. Um, so if you're a little bit, your wording's a little bit confusing in your actual paper, that they can look back at this and get an idea of what you're talking about. You're not gonna pass just doing your uh, planning in your response book, but you never know. It could give you a point or two, and that could be the difference in getting a U on your ACE exam or getting an E on your ACE exam. And you all E's get degrees, so they say. All right, so what I like to do for planning is to P or peel. If you do the P right and write correctly, you will already add the L. For those of you who do not know, it stands for point, evidence, evaluation, and link. Typically, the link would be to your next paragraph, but in this case, it would be linking it back to the main question. So once again, to repeat the question, how consistent was the French government's attitude towards Germany in the period from 1919 to 1933? So my first paragraph, my point is that the French government's attitude was consistent. My evidence is that they wanted to ensure a weakened Germany and limit French vulnerability. The examples are going to be my Treaty of Versailles, the Ruhr issue, the World Disarmament Conference, and alliances with Eastern European nations. For my second paragraph, because remember on Bs, you have to argue both sides. Uh, I have that. My point is that the French attitude was inconsistent. It changed due to the need to repair relations with other European nations. Example, leaving the Ruhr, Ruhr Valley, the Dawes Plan, the Carnot Treaty, and the Young Plan. And then finally, my third one, my one where I get that, those extra points where I make sure I'm not just getting a level three, but where I'm going to level four, possibly level five. I'm going to argue which one was the most, which one's actually factual or most factual, the one that I had the best argument for rather. 
And that is that overall, the French government's attitude was consistent. My um, evidence here is my is the protection from future German threat was always the main goal. Uh, and um, evidence is Ruhr, the plans that they agreed to and also Adolf Hitler. So the way that this looks, this plan looks whenever I actually write it out is right here. Here's my typed out response. Once again, I typed the question up there at the top, which is how consistent was the French government's attitude towards Germany in the period from 1919 to 1933. So what I wrote here, I started with my first one, which is that it's, they were consistent. My second paragraph is that they were inconsistent. And my third paragraph is really kind of overall really sort of answering the prompt. So I'm giving my evidence and then I'm really directly answering the prompt with my third paragraph. So here we go. The French government's attitudes towards Germany was consistent between 1919 and 1933. Following World War I, France wanted to secure Ger ensure Germany could never be a threat to their security again. French leader Georges Clemenceau was insistent that the Treaty of Versailles inflicted harsh punishments on Germany, including the reparations and arms reductions. In 1923, when Germany was unable to repair those reparation, or repay those reparations, France invaded the rural region and took over the mines. By doing so, France damaged Germany's economy. Additionally, throughout the 1920s, France made alliances with various Eastern European nations as a means to protect against any future German aggression. Finally, at the World Disarmament Conference, France refused to reduce the size of their military due to the fear that Germany may begin rebuilding their own military. However, the French did show some signs of an inconsistent attitude towards Germany. The main reasons for this in inconsistent attitude were the need to repair or maintain relations with traditional allies and limit their own vulnerability. France pulled out of the rural region following British condemnation of the French occupation. Lack of support from Britain meant France was more vulnerable. Also, France accepted the Dawes Plan in 1924 to help Germany make reparations payments and also the, da the Young Plan in 1929 reducing the total amount of reparations Germany was required to pay. It could therefore be argued that France became less antagonistic to Germany throughout the 1920s until the worldwide economic depression and the rise of Adolf Hitler to power. Overall, France was consistent with their attitude towards Germany. The French wanted to keep Germany as weak as possible and prevent the possibility of a future German attack. Although there is some evidence that France did relax their attitudes throughout the 1920s, their acceptance of the plan various plans aimed at helping Germany had more to do with repairing its relationship with other nations. The occupation of the war damaged relations with other nations such as Britain. By agreeing to the Dawes Plan and later the Young Plan, France was attempting to repair relations with Britain so to limit their own vulnerability. Additionally, by by securing alliances with Eastern European nations, especially those geographically close to Germany throughout the 1920s, France was working to keep Germany isolated and itself more secure. The rise of Hitler in the early 1930s simply provided France the ability to be more open towards their attitude towards Germany. All right, so I wrote this pretty quickly, so I did have some little errors in my writing. I apologize for those, that, but you guys would have that as well. So as you can see here, what I've done here to follow with the rubric is I've argued both sides, which is required to pass this one. So I have then my first paragraph, France was consistent. And then my second paragraph, I have France was inconsistent. Now to get into that level four and level five range, I'm making taking a stance and I'm supporting it with thorough evidence. I'm backing up my claims. So while this might not be a high level five, this, if you were to get this question and write a response similar to this and follow this general outline, then you are good to go and you will pass your ACE exam. The big thing with your B's, big, big thing with your B's and actually with your A's as well, is that you have to make sure that you are giving solid factual evidence to make, to base your claims on. If you wanted to argue in this case, that France was mostly inconsistent, by all means do so. The big thing here is you have to provide good history, good evidence to back you up. You might disagree with me and that's fine. You just have to be able to back it up with your argument. That's what they're looking for. Can you make a solid argument based off of the historical evidence? If you do that, you will be good to go. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you would like me to make more, I can work on that. Just put a comment below or if you're one of my students, let me know in class and I can work on that soon. And um, good luck to you on your ACE exams. Don't forget to read over the rubrics and make sure you know exactly what's required of you before you get to your test day. There is in my first videos on paper ones and paper twos, I do go over the rubric. So go check out those videos for an overview of each one of the rubrics. And once again, best of luck.